Okay, day two of the Cheltenham Festival. Thrilling day yesterday. Some pretty good finishes and all sorts of exciting stuff going on. I've got Stu with me again. Hello. Another day, another day, Stu. Hello. Yes, no, all good here. <laughs> We're getting set up for another 12 mind-blowing races. Right, and it's been raining all night as well, so it's heavy going all the way now. I think it'll probably be heavy for the rest of the festival, so that's going to make things interesting as well, isn't it, with the people who've got these old ex-flat horses that will probably start to struggle, so we might see a few strange results throughout the uh, rest of the week. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Sadly, a lot of mine are ex-flat horses. <laughs> <laughs> so we start off then with the with the first of the four-year-old races, Fred Winter Juvenile Handicap Hurdle. This is the, the one that's the handicap, and it's a furlong shorter than the Triumph, which is coming up either later today or tomorrow. Um, what do you like to look of in this? Um, well, it's one of those where you could have a couple of entries, and like you say, some of the bigger horses would have obviously gone off to the Triumph. I think what's top rated here is Dame Joanna Lumley for Paul Rhodes, hasn't really got much form. In fact, hardly any of them have got any form. My Kinky Moore has come third and second. Could he step up? I don't think so. He's not really that good. No, it's a tough one, this. I don't know. You go first. Loud cookie for Darren Howe's front runner, probably. And I think this over this day, I think over the races, if you've got some front running horses and they're good enough, then they're going to be very hard to catch. This is true. You've got two in this, haven't you? You fancy either of yours much? No, I don't, to be honest with you. I mean, they're not really, I mean, Kinky Moore is, yeah, needs to be in a handicap. I still don't think he's good enough to beat some of these, sadly. My four year olds are no good, and I'm, I've just got nothing over two miles. I can't breed two milers. It's really strange. I mean, we've even been looking out for a good grain bread. I haven't found one of them either. It's funny because at the start of the season, I thought my four year olds were going to be my. My, my best in the in the jumping side because they both started really well I've got St Domingo in this and Playground who was one that was, a, was in my flat team last year and I put him in to be a hurdler this year and they both started off really really well I'd sort of decided that Playground was going in this race and then he won last week and he got clutter booked Basically, because you know, you know what Gray's like when he um, when you win a race. I think it was a, a decent sort of race, and he got up that much that if I'd have run him in this, he'd have been top weight. And I thought, if you think I'm running in a Cheltenham race off top weight when Paul Rhodes and Darren Thompson and people like that got horses in, you can forget that. So I'll flip flop mine and say, there, uh, Playground's going to the Triumph, and the one that was going to go into Triumph, St. Domingo, is running in this. But I think See, Saint... there's always some reason why you've had to swap them. There's mm. such an omen, and yeah. it's a called a Saint, Saint Sunday. Oh, St. Domingo is what Everton Football Club was called when it started. St. Domingo's. That's why that's, Sunday, St. Sundays. That's why it's called St. That's why it's called St. Domingo, you see? Were there uh, Sunday, Sunday League side? <laughs> well, yeah, they were a bit like a Sunday League side last year. <laughs> but they were called St. Domingo. And the, the horse's dam's called Park End, which is the is, is the other end of the pitch, the Gladys Street, and the dam of that one was called Gladys Street. I tried to name my horses sensibly, so that's why I did that. Anyway, we're talking about that at the moment, are we? Because St. Domingo at the start of the season looked quite good but no I don't think he'll win this because I think it's, it's, it's better over further but I really couldn't I couldn't see poor old playground running around here with lumping top weight around so I've swapped them over Come that's on, that and I, I, I got a funny feeling that that, that, um, <laughs> that you might be pulling a fast one here and I reckon you're kinky more is going to win nah, nah I wish <laughs> nah, you never know well, you how many winners did you have last year you had loads of winners last year didn't you and I had four last year but like I said it was you probably didn't tip any of them you probably laughed when I anybody did, suggested any of them were going to come anywhere near winning no but I hit form in the last two weeks I think I went too early I, the last couple of weeks I had some good winners and I think uh, I just timed it wrong this time round and I think a few of them have been hit in the handicap which is correct if they've won races so uh, I kind of think I might not have had the same advantage and the heavy ground's not good for me the only one that's picked me in the competition I don't think uh, I'm going to score your points like I did last year <laughs> well I was lucky because not many people have picked me because I'm in the same group as Leon van Rensburg and everybody waited to see if he was entering and once, once Leon entered everybody picked him instead so <laughs> including uh, me yeah. so that was, uh, that was... well it was done I, I tell you how I did it it's obviously done on previous wins and it's just the way the groups fall Mm. So obviously, yeah, Jim was up there, would have, which is no longer with us, would have made a difference. But obviously, yeah, so you just happened to be in the first 12 
hence being in group three as yeah. Leon is yeah so oh, I don't make, any, make, any, make any difference to me what group I'm in I'm just saying people didn't didn't have to pick did me did you pick yourself no I did not pick Leon <laughs> Oh, if Leon hadn't have been in my group, I would have picked myself, but I thought there's no way I'm going to have more winners than Leon, so... You never know. Anyway, that's the Fred Winter out of the way. Then we go along to the bumper, <laughs> the weather is champion bumper. Um, very, very uh, over, obviously, two miles. It's G1. It's the same old horses racing against each other again. <laughs> oh, no, I'm and really not a fan of these at all. I know they haven't been really, and then no, even, either, even in the real Cheltenham Festival, the bumper's not a lot of fun. Well, not we should stop. They were only allowed to run three times. That'll be it. Yeah. So they can only. So at least it will be fairer for a lot more uh, trade. I don't know, but then we get the problem with oh, they can't run every week, so yeah. let's not go down oh. that street. But I'll go for Joshua's. It's all in the hips. Yeah, that's winning quite often, isn't it? It's um... well, it did before. Porn Stars has come along and taken a few of the last couple of races, but I still fancy. Uh, Josh's horse. Yeah, I think this is going to be one where we both go for the same one, because I'm going to go for it as well, but I'm not doing it with any sort of expertise, because to be brutally honest, if I'm not commentating on the bumper, I don't watch it, and I never run anything in them. The JLT Golden Miller, novice is Chase, two and a half miles. Some nice, nice horses in here. I, I, I like Moo Moo Vodka for John Morgan, Torfian Street's always there or thereabouts. Leon's Dragon Legend, you're not quite sure, because it's probably not run for three weeks. And then Chestnut Surprise for Paul. You've got your tainted Tina in here, which you quite like, don't you? No, she, run, she came second in a maiden when she came into the thing, run really well. Or it might have even been a G, a G race, to be honest with you. But since then, not really done anything. I don't know if I'm getting the right distance out of her or anything. Again, lights the firm ground, so uh, probably come last in this one. Mm. I'm not sure about Dale Hinton's Everybody Sobriquet. Everybody Sobriquet, that is. You, you know what Sobriquet oh, is? Okay. I don't know. It's I think this is, put on your barbecue, isn't it? I, no, I think this is a this is one of the best named horses in the league because what does Derek do? I, Derek I names, his, names he, he names his horses after people, doesn't he? He's got an horse called Jim Murray. He had oh, one. Okay. He had one for uh, Doug and me called um, oh, what Martin and. Well, a sobriquet is a, is a nickname. That's a posh word for giving somebody a nickname. So he uses other people's names to name his horses. So he's given everybody a nickname, which is great. Whether he's, that's how he's meant it or this was accidentally happened like that, I don't know. But if he's thought it, it's a piece of genius. If he hasn't thought it, it's a great piece of luck. Well, a man's a, a genius. It's a perfectly named horse for Derek Hinton to call a horse everybody sobriquet. is brilliant. Oh, well, well done, Dale. Uh, <laughs> I've learned something new today. So Moo Moo Vodka for me, John Morgan. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> well, if this race was a handicap, I'd be tipping myself. Gemini Sweet is, it likes it as muddy as you can get. The heavier ground, the better, and it will absolutely love the ground. But if this was a handicap, we'd be getting 30 odd pound off the top ones and it'd beat them easily, but it won't be able to. I don't think of level so you're weights. one of those trainers when they upload their horses, they just put everything as good. Yeah, I don't bother changing. I'm. Uh, shit, well, that makes you, our life difficult, doesn't it? Well, no, it doesn't because it's, it's it's it, it depends what it depends what what you, what you like and what you do. I don't believe in telling anybody anything they don't need to know. If there's a reason for people to know what ground it goes on, I'll tell them. There's a reason for them to know how old it is, so I tell them. There's a reason for them to know what its best distance is, so I tell them. No reason for anybody to know what ground my horse goes on. They can work it out for themselves. So don't tell anybody anything more than you have to. If you work that throughout everything in your life, you won't go too far wrong. MI5 Martin. <laughs> don't tell anybody anything. Yeah, including, just lie. <laughs> including what your real name is. <laughs> Everybody sobriquet. Anyway, so yeah, so you, mine won't win. If you're I'm, not picking your own, what are you picking? I'm not then? picking my own. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start getting boring if I keep going for Leon all the time. So I'm going to go for Torfian Street, Darren Thompson. Okay, yeah, always there or thereabouts. Yep. Deserves a winner. Well, that will move us on to the old Pertemps. Uh, final over three miles, a group three hurdle. I'm actually really surprised at the amount of horses that qualified for this are not in it. There's actually only nine going to post, and I think there was about 14 or 15, if I remember rightly. Yeah, but I think a lot, a lot of them, 16. a lot of people qualified horses in this that are better than this, basically, and are, are, going, are running in the. There's, there's a couple of good three mile races, isn't there, later in the yeah, week? Yeah, I guess. And I think they've called it earlier on in the season, probably wasn't that many good three mile races and they got in before their mark went up because we had this hoo-ha last oh, year didn't okay. we about the mark being horses couldn't get in but this year I think if I'm right the Grey's changed it so you can get in if you're rated 160 but nobody has done top rated is 134 I think so oh, yeah. um, which is, is surprising so, but I think most of the most of the big trainers have missed this race out because the, the, the horses that they got that are qualified have got bigger prizes to go for to go for yeah, yeah. you're probably right 
mm, tricky one this though it's a real open race I mean Darren Thompson's Falun Gong doesn't really like going round neither does Molly at Surfers Opera Love a few times Nickel Coin you'd like Fall Out Lad but one last week and it's probably gone up 20 pounds so probably going to be carrying a little bit more weight so I'm going to go right down the bottom for Trabago for James Follis yeah that one's been knocking around for a long time isn't it? that one will be, will be managing, managing to run it, run from out of the handicap but it must have done something to qualify wasn't it so I don't know how, how close you had to finish to get in um, I think it's only first and second isn't it was it I, I, I don't know but so it must have, it must have done something to, um, to get in so it's, it, it can't be a complete no open I mean it, it's, it's, a, it's a weird race it's because I wasn't going to run mine make you laugh because my, make you laugh won the very first qualifier and it won it really well and then ever since then afterwards it pulled up every single time for the last two and it's been ninth and seventh so it's done nothing and I thought Do you know what there's no point in running that horse because it has got absolutely no chance I'll stick it in some low grade race somewhere else and of course there, there wasn't one so we come down to it and I thought oh, it's qualified I might as well stick it in so, so mine is just in there but you can, the safest bet of the week is as they pass the winning post and go out on the second circuit mine will slow down and down to a trot and get pulled up okay I don't know with your horses for courses. I couldn't even get one to qualify. That's how good my chance is. <laughs> yeah, and they don't look, they don't look like world beaters these. So I reckon it's going to be Carl on running the wrong colours. Arrogante is going to manage it, and it's going to be one of your top weights that's going to win because oh, okay. he's one of the few that doesn't seem to have done a lot right. And of course, if he's running in the Stu Gray Lucky Cheltenham silks, yeah, with a red cap, you're never sure. Mm. You're never sure. <laughs> as long as he wins, he doesn't matter, doesn't care what colour it's got on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, out of all the trainers, he is probably the nicest guy that would say, no problems. <laughs> Everyone else would probably have a little bit of a man. <laughs> yeah, of course, probably would, yeah. But I think, if we remember rightly, Daniel Ed, master at a school or something, so he's probably used to teachers and kids moaning all day. You know, he bans moaning in his house, probably, and doesn't do any moaning at all. Cause he's mm, just no, he's probably surrounded no, he just seems a genuinely nice guy, doesn't he? Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's be honest. Okay, that moves us on to the Ryanair Chase, race 17, my fifth call of the day, over two mile five. Tricky one this, what do you think? Well, this is one of the prestige races, isn't it? And it's it looks cocky. it could be quite interesting because uh, three or four weeks ago, I'd have just said Daz Moyu, Darren Thompson, because I think that did it win two or three on a trot, and it looked like it was going to be brilliant. And then all of a sudden, it's just gone completely out of form the last few yeah, weeks. Yeah, no, I've noticed that. I think it was looking for its hat trick, and it, mm. or it didn't get its hat trick, or it had its hat trick and was looking for its fourth. Yeah, it was running much better at the beginning of the season. Desert Orchid is nowhere near as good as the real Desert Orchid, and has, has been pretty disappointing. I think I think John Morgan. Will probably agree with me on that one. I haven't mentioned Graham Clutterbuck yet, apart from moaning about him handicapping my horses too much and not and changing the weather at the wrong time of the day. Sonic Lady was a brilliant miler in the in the eighties, but uh, she's a pretty good chaser for um, Gray in this as well. So I reckon she could bring us pretty. He normally manages to to land at least one Cheltenham race. That looks like it could be the one. Mm, okay, fair enough. No, I think. Uh... I'll stop doing that so I'll go for crunch time <laughs> I thought that was an impression of the horse that you were um, oh no I keep doing it I've got to stop <laughs> sorry so I'm going to go for crunch time for Leon Van Rensburg ok so that will take us on to your final race of the festival the last one you'll be commentating yeah, on it the whole of the children and I get the some bet stairs hurdle yeah, so you've got two, oh, two big two big races to go out on then two of the major big grade ones so that's uh, that's pretty good not too, too big a field for me to deal with because we don't like too many horses just the nine of them and you've got to look at obviously the first six or previous winners or oh, even wreck it ralph's won for leon memories so seven of them have won other, other than wonderful in young life for, for graham and magic muldoon is that magic muldoon as in squatland i like to call me magic muldoon <laughs> no it's not it's <laughs> I don't think keep telling you stories about my horse because they'll turn it into this sort of like uh, preview show. show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we, we, we don't want to do that. As I've said before, I like to name my horses um, something to do with where they've come from or, or what their sizes up are called. That horse is called Magic Muldoon. Now, Muldoon was an old folk duo in the 70s called Curtis Muldoon. It was Dave Curtis and somebody else Muldoon. I can't remember what his other name was. And um, the sire of that horse is called Curtis Muldoon. And the the dam was called Magic something else, I can't remember what it was. And I decided that it was no good. <laughs> I got rid of it. And then it came up in an auction when it was about five after it had won a load of races. So I bought it back. And then it ended up getting through my um, trials, and, trials and into the team. So that's why it's called Magic Muldoon. Because that's the name that the game came up with for it. It wasn't the game wrong. It wasn't the name uh, at all. Called it. it wouldn't have been called that. 
choices. So it's one of them bizarre things. I had it last season as, as well with a, with another horse that I, I did that with, and um, it obviously did better being trained by somebody else. I bought it back and ended up putting it back in. Back in. So a little tip for people that is, if you sort of like, I don't know what to do with a horse and sell it, and then. What do you mean it's been trained by somebody else and trained better? Yeah, it must have been because it ended up winning loads of races. It turned up in an auction, and I thought well, that's pretty good. Oh, now I'll buy it back, and I did. So I go. wonder if it does make a difference where they go and well, where they run. Well, I suppose it must do because the, the the computer AI then takes control of of races they run in, doesn't it? And I might have been running this in two mile races. I don't know. So anyway, it hasn't worked because it's been absolutely useless. And the only reason it's in this is because he can't put two in the Gold Cup this season. And I was going to stick him okay. in as my second horse in the no Gold chance. Cup. See, that's no chance. Absolutely no chance. What are you going to go for then? What I'm going to go for in this one is Crossbow Creek. Okay, well, I'll go for Eight's a Mystery, where Joshua has been always there or thereabouts. So that has had one fall, but I assume that may well have been over a chase of So Eight's a Mystery for Joshua. Okay, you've got three in, there, three in there, rated over 170. So that's a, that's a pretty hot race for you to uh, for you to bow and out on. Gonna, and then you're going to slip into the commentary box for um. a big race, the Brown Advisory. Handicap over two two miles five furlongs and a nice big field here. Hmm, it's a dual entry uh, race, isn't it? I actually quite like the look of mine in this one. I haven't got many that I actually fancy, but uh, I like my half time tea time down towards the bottom. Should be just at the bottom of the weights when it's top rated 162, so just boarding on the nine stone 12. And I think it's got a good chance. Mm. And I'm not going to go, though, I'm not going to obviously pick mine because you keep going on about this burnt wood and mud told me it can win well i think Correct. it's probably one of my best chances for a win this week because it's 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 one on really heavy ground a group three and then um, it's been running over i've been running over hurdles <laughs> a few any, times since. is there any eskimo horses in here because i'm thinking of uh, the front runners here i can't no there isn't one is there David Robertson's Eskimo horses because they've all run front runners and they get ahead mm. seven, eight lengths in a race and I think uh, as I said earlier I think that's going to be the advantage in a lot of these races but I can't see one I'm not picking my own by the way because right. I wouldn't be giving it Kiss of kiss of stew, <laughs> which would be foolish. Ralph of James Forrest. I don't know why. It, why I don't know why it's funny when a horse has got a name like Ralph. It's sort of like when there was that really good flat horse a few years ago called Jeremy, wasn't there? And I just couldn't take it seriously. Get a horse called Jeremy it just doesn't. A horse called Ralph doesn't. Yeah, like, it's nice there's a horse called it, Lara Croft above it. Well, I think we probably all prefer Lara Croft to Ralph Schumacher. I presume that's named after Schumer, Ralph Schumacher, because it's a Formula One folly source. If it was called Ralph Schumacher, it wouldn't be funny. But the fact that it's just called Ralph makes it funny in my mind. Silly things I find funny. Um, okay. Which is probably why, I, probably why I enjoy talking to you so much. Um, falling through clouds, I think, will have just a little bit too much class for my burnt wood. If those top two weren't in this, I'd fancy mine to win, but I think... If the weight, if the weight doesn't, the weight will stop while built, and I think falling through clouds will sneak it. He's still, no, Joshua likes hex of life there, though, doesn't he? Really and tricky. Yeah, mm. no, well, I'll still stick with Ralph. How many, Ralph. how many, how many times do you see trainers have two horses in a race, and the one that they think's going to win doesn't, and the one that does doesn't doesn't yeah. does or something? Well, that moves you on to the Troll House Stud Mare's Novice Hurdle. It's given me a, an opportunity for my best horse. It hasn't won yet. Keeps coming second or third or whatever. Made in Arkan, who I would have had to have run in the Arkle um, against all those hot pots, but I've got her in here. I think she can beat all these. I think I think this I is think this is going to be my winner. Super small field as well. Mm. I mean, the, the better trainers form of their horses is not good. And like you say, they wouldn't be running this if they could go to uh, the Ark or something. I don't want to tip you, all <laughs> people, but I'm going to give you the kiss of stew. So made in after. Well, that's the end, of that, the end of that one. It comes second now. You've now you've tipped it. But I mean, I've, I've got to have I've got to have a winner eventually in the festival. I'm doing better with a jump in this year than I've ever done. I already have more jump winners this year than I did last season and the season before. But the flats dropped off for me. But the jumps have got better. So that's the next aim is to get a festival win. And by the time race twenty comes around, if I haven't had one already, and then this one doesn't win, I think I'll probably have to admit that I'm not going to get one because I think. This is my best chance of a winner all week. Oh, well, good luck with that one. I hope you, I hope you do do well. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, that moves us on to the Kim Muir Challenge. I am the holder of this. Oh, yeah? With, uh, yeah, with Napoleon Gray, who won it last year. He goes again. He doesn't mind the conditions. Although he's obviously a year older. And he hasn't, the, un, the unfortunate thing, he's just had no form this year, so he's not really moved on from a five to a six year old. So the fact that he's running off 106 this year, I don't think so, which is a real shame because I thought he's a good horse, but um, not this time round. Which leads me on to 
big old field. Mm, sometime blues for Derek Hinton. Got a chance off that way. Big field. But I'm going to go for John Morgan here. I think uh, although it pulled up in its last race, if it's one of his front runners, this will be prime. It'll be a prime one. So Ebony James for Jane Morgan. Okay. Well, I'm going to go for Ashton for James Follis, Formula One Follis. I think I tipped this in the Gold Cup a couple of seasons ago, or maybe even last season. It runs the odd really good race. This is this yeah, is a been around for a couple of seasons as well. So and it's, it's, it's obviously last season. Still going to give quite a lot of weight away to a lot of them, but it's getting a few pounds from the top one. So I think it could could be in with a bit of a shout that one. Okay. Good luck. Well, I hope uh, I'd like. To, uh, hopefully, it's somebody out, outside of the top four or five, because obviously, I can imagine in the past twenty-one races they've been pretty much covered by the good guys. Um, so, on, obviously, these handicap chases are the ones where uh, the little people can get a chance. That means you want to race twenty-two in the Triumph Hurdle. Yeah. Talk about it. This used to be. This used to be the only non-handicap where bookmakers paid out on fourth. It was an old tradition oh, because it always used that. to have about 20, 25, 30 runners in it. And then they brought that Fred Winter in a few seasons ago, the handicap one, and it's the, the field for the Triumph is now not as big as it used to be. You used to get some really good, good old flat horses coming win this. So it's um, yeah, last it's one for all the little babies, the four-year-olds. Mm, I think last year we had, a, we had a really small field. We had a really small field for this last year, but this year we've got a more sensible size one. And so if you have a horse born in December, mm-hmm. no, let's say November, late November, yep. against a horse that wasn't born until April, is six months older and it's classed as a three-year-old yep. or that's four-year-old. Right. That's right. That's, that's, that's so that's how can that be right? Six well, that's, months. Well, that's why they they do the breeding things like that. It's not it's not like the breeding in in, in SO6 where you're breeding right the way through the season. All the breeding is geared up so that the the foals are born in March or April. The reason they don't gear it up so they're born in January, which is obviously better because then they're even older, is there's the risk. If you've got it geared up to be born in January, it might just end up getting born a little bit too early and then you've had it. But then we know they keep them back. Well, you, know, they you, you wouldn't, the foal. probably wouldn't get away with it if you did it all the time. You're going to... Because it's not like one horse gets born a week sort of thing. It's like non non. If you go to a big stud farm, they're popping out like nobody's business from that sort of February onwards. So yeah, that's just the way it is. And of course, in Australia, it's probably Frank was born the year before, probably. <laughs> well, in Australia, they 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 change their birth date in August, I think, or something. So it's a different time of the year. So you can that's how you, you used to be able to do things by mo- moving horses between the hemispheres by making th- their horses are six months older than. I was all the other way around. I can't remember. Doug, Doug will tell us. Where is he, where is he where you need him? Chomping on blooming oysters somewhere when he, we need him to answer the answer question, the question about, about that. But it's, they're either six months younger or six months older than ours. I think they're six months older, which is probably why their sprinters are better than ours. But that's probably... Doug will probably tell you it's because their sprinters are better than ours. I'll say it's because they're six months older than ours. That's all there is to it, really. Mm, fair enough. Right, winner of this one. Hmm... Well, some good looking horses hard. in there, isn't there? Some horses with there some pretty decent Carl form. Carl Arrogante off 150. Graham's got one in there. Trade Wars off 158. Got to be their best horses in their stable, I imagine. And this is, of course, why good. most of these haven't gone for the Fred Winter because the top weight in the Fred Winter was 129. So you can see that everything from Ogney Blanc up would have had to give weight away if it had gone in that race, which is why I flipped my playground over to here because he would have been, he would have been giving lumps of weight away in the, in the Fred Winter. Um, you think you'll go well and maybe a back to back wins for playground? Won't happen. I doubt it because the, again you've got this is off level weights this one remember this isn't a handicap so it's had a lot of these four year olds have been running against each other every week um, Playground has beaten Ogney Blanc and has been beaten by Ogney Blanc I think it's probably done the same thing to a few of the others in the field so they're all around about the same sort of level apart from maybe the top three or four you, you can't you can't bet against Fidway I don't think in this I think Fidway looks to be the best it does no and he obviously likes very soft conditions so but no I'm going to go for clockwork for Kyle Arrigan for 150 he deserves the win yep so the Vincent O'Brien County Hurdle is next this is a two mile one furlong handicap hurdle and, and it's very open I think it I is and it's one of them surprise races again isn't it we've got Carl Arrigante has got the top weight by about 14 pound I mean you said to him at the start of the season you're going to have a horse that's rated a stone better than everybody else in a hurdle at Cheltenham he wouldn't have believed you yeah no because Dan Thompson has got a couple in there or one of them is probably the chaser but they're quite lonely rated 115 116 Molly it's off 111 Oh, there's an Eskimo in there for David Robertson. I'm going to have to pick that one. Even even before I've gone down the rest, I think Frantic Eskimo will uh, drag all these along. <laughs> if I remember right, here's a, a, a right front runner. 
from previous races. He hasn't got a lot of form. Obviously, it looks like he might run out of steam. I like my love embrace, but conditions are not right for it. They just don't go on heavy ground, my horses. They really don't. Um, but now I'm going to go for Frantic Eskimo for David Robertson without talking about the rest. Right, well, I'm going to go for Orange Goes Red for Molly Et Surfer. I was going to go for Spring Collection, and I remember it won last week. It's difficult to win two weeks on the trot, and I think Orange Goes Red is always there or thereabouts. And Molly Et Surfer's got his Samoa Sunrise in, which is rated superior to Orange Goes Red, but I think Orange Goes Red will win. Okay, yeah, no, I think Molly Et will get... Uh, I don't know if he won, actually, at Cheltenham last year. I can't remember rightly. Um, but if he hasn't, he's bound to get one this this, this year and that will move us on to your last call of the day and the last uh, the lucky last but not really a lucky last because it's the Albert Bartlett novices another novice race G1 is there this many novices races in the real Cheltenham because it just seems to be every other race is a novice yeah there, yeah, there, 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 there are quite a lot of uh, okay. novice, novice races and, but there are a lot more runners in them really uh, it's what we were saying earlier three more novices there don't seem to be many of them about in this in the league this season because um, the chases and the hurdles the novices the field are not very big. Lil oh, Rockefeller. Lil Rockefeller for John Morgan is interesting, but I think I find that interesting because the the real Lil Rockefeller is a great little horse, and I used to sort of um, like betting on that. So that's probably why I'm thinking of of, of that one. So I'm not going to go for it. I'm going to go for David Robertson's The Cone. Oh, okay. Bit off the bit off the, out of the park there. That one. I wouldn't I haven't even really looked at. I'm going to go for Villa de la Plata for poor, poor form, but uh, it looks like it will win. Hmm. Okay. Right. So that'll be day. That's day two. They're done then. So 24 races so far. Well, we'll add after 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 this one, all at Cheltenham. We've just got uh, five to look forward to tomorrow. Yeah, you can scurry off up to the um, commentary box and leave it leave it nice and tidy for me when you're finished, and I'll um I'll see you later.